chicos, it's two days after our wild ride in the acceleration zone between Tenerife and Gran Canaria. And um, yeah, we challenged ourselves and also the boat a bit. It was for real a shakedown cruise. And yeah, it also means that we need to clean up quite a bit. And look at the boat right now. It's once more a massive mess. So let me show you. <sighs> Kitchen, we just had lunch, so that's okay. Then we have mattresses here. We have everything open here in the back because we needed to flood the whole, like take all the salt water out of the bilge and flood it with sweet water a few times to rinse it. All the salt water out, so we have whole floorboard in the back cabin, our gun, all the mess here, and also that's below our bed. Also here we cleaned up the whole bilge was full, not full, but like filled like 20-30 meters with salt water. So we took it out, put in sweet water, took it out, sweet water again, took it out and now cleaned it. Of course it's the best accessible parts of the boat, as always. And then let's see what the other guys are doing. We continue with the mess up here. Some cushions from the bedroom, some cushions to dry from the cockpit. And then we have Robert working in the aft locker. Everything from the aft locker is out too. So we really emptied all our spaces. Hello there. What are you up to? Hi. Welcome again to the aft locker, something that I hoped I wouldn't have to say in a very long time. But yes, we are back and we are back at the steering. Because it acted up, it came loose. All these big screws there, they came loose, the screws on the lid came loose. This thing here fell down, here you can see where it scraped when we still used it. The whole thing barely held on. It would have probably cracked at one point. So it's good we caught it in time. And I now have screwed it back together. Have added one more reinforcement to it that hopefully will make it last a bit longer. Tighten everything extra securely. And also we had to pump out a lot of water from here. That's what Kira did. Did you tell it already? Yeah. Yeah, here already said that. Yep, so it's back to work so far. Two days of work and we're only fixing stuff that broke on Friday. <laughs> Fun. And on the front deck, here the mess continues. We're drying out all the stuff that got wet. From paint, to belts, to filters, to ropes. On the side of the hull where we had all the bumps from the loose anchor. So there's still a lot of things to do. After having worked in the harbor of Mogan for three days, we moved out to anchor right in front of Puerto de Mogan, in the exact same place where we had anchored a couple of months before when we just started to explore the Canary Islands. We still needed to do some repairs, but more importantly, still needed to finish some jobs that we just hadn't gotten around to that needed to be done before we can explore some more remote offshore destinations. So once again we found ourselves in boat work mode. Folks, we're still in the Canary Islands and um, working a bit on the boat but because we have already filmed so much boat work we didn't bother to film the last few days but now I just walked up into the cockpit and I, I thought I have to film this. What? Kira is an amazing carpenter. I mean, sitting there in the sun with a head as big as you, <laughs> nailing on a... I suspect this is to join two plates 
two plates of wood, two planks of wood so to make this wider. And the whole thing that Kira is building is down there. So this is what Kira has been building. This is the makings of a cupboard. It's gonna be a cupboard about ye high. So the same height as the rest of our kitchen, providing us with additional kitchen space. And this wall that hides the neatly arranged bilge pumps and the steering mechanism and some cables. That is what Kira is building up there right now. But look at how perfect this is done. Look at the perfect joints here. This is completely flush. There is um, some paneling, there is a door. There is a door on hinges that already works. There is even some paneling here that makes it nice. We have nice corners. This looks like it was an original part of the boat, but it isn't. It's gonna be awesome when it's done. Also, the boat looks majorly chaotic. We have all the tools out again everywhere. We have to put all this away at night so that Jan can sleep, who is now here doing the important IT work of hooking up the AIS. And um, I'm constructing a cabin here in the front cabin. This should be a cabin, but it is storage space right now. But I am adding a surface here and I will be adding a surface here so that one person can sleep here in this cabin. Then we need to get rid of all this stuff and this stuff and that stuff too and that stuff probably as well and that stuff for sure and that stuff probably as well. So frantic last days of interior work, the boat itself, the rest, like all the technical systems work, that's all done. So we're safe, but now we make it a bit more beautiful and we create a lot more space by finishing these projects because then finally we can get rid of all the wood that has been hanging around the boat for far too long and free up another cabin. So we have actually two cabins for crew and guests, which would be really nice and some space to add food and toys and whatever. So fun days. It feels like we're still stuck a bit. Feels like we should have left here weeks ago, but I think these days are well invested because they will make the boat so much nicer. Time to take off the foliage. Ooh, that's a tiny inches. Shiny, and it's gonna be the backside of our garbage <laughs> cupboard. Wow, that's I think <laughs> perfect to go in the back of a cupboard. Yes. And that's where it's going, in the back of our new cupboard. Yeah. Wow, this looks so much better. And you have this plexiglass in front of it and it looks posh. Yeah, nice. Right? As soon as this plexiglass is in front of it, it, it feels looks neater. like it looks a lot neater and it looks like it's something to look at, not something to work with or something that annoys. <laughs> All right, departure is getting closer and we have done a humongous shopping trip. One day stuff and one day food and uh, yeah, we didn't film much of that, but we have stored everything on the boat, not in the boat yet, so have a look. It's in just a random assorted pile, but there is loads of things. Food bags, well, there's a little bit of trash, but most of that is gear or food. And down here we're rearranging the innards of the boat. So everything is out and about and it hardly looks like a sailboat, but we're used to that already. So it used to look like a construction site. Now it looks like a pile of stuff. And tomorrow by this time, we'll be ready, I think.
We are spending good money. Filling up good turn lay with diesel. We have an empty 300 liter tank that side and we had a 300 liter tank with 200 liter empty that side so we're gonna fill 450 to 500 liters of diesel which is a lot but we are going to need it at one point and here the diesel is comparably cheap and probably of good quality so goodbye money and goodbye CO2 footprint. wanted to depart to um, Cabo Verde on last Friday and it's Sunday now but the last minute we realized that while the wind was looking very good strong 25 to 30 knots but from perfectly aft we realized that, that there is lots of waves coming from the northwest caused by this big 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 storm system that's currently hitting Spain and northern Europe and those waves were not in the same direction as the wind so we would have probably had a crosswind well yeah a crosswind situation or cross wave situation where strong winds are blowing in a different direction than big waves coming from another system so we would have probably gotten wind waves substantial wind waves from the direction of the wind and then they would have crossed with substantial waves from the storm further up north which can create really uncomfortable conditions so we decided not to go instead we're hanging out here in the Canary Islands for a couple of days more doing a test sail today in the acceleration zone between Tenerife and Gran Canaria and right now we are testing our wind vane because as you can see no one is steering the steering is locked with a little rope and the boat is keeping surprisingly stable and the wind wind does a good job I mean I'm happy we fixed that just sitting there steering us and so far has been keeping us well on course so I'd say all is good on turn lake I'm happy how the boat looks, how the boat feels. We're ready to go, ready to sail. Guys, if you ever try to preserve vegetables for a crossing, you're out of space in the fridge, so you dice them and then you vacuum pack them. I don't vacuum pack cauliflower because apparently vacuum pack cauliflower gases out and the gas smells royally like fart just like 10 times stronger so here is an open pack would you do me the favor and do a smell test no come on <laughs> come on ah it's absolutely disgusting <laughs> and you don't believe that we packed three bags with vegetables and every bag had cauliflower <laughs> so it's a royal fail <laughs> yeah. Yeah. you should have seen us eating it it was a mm. yikes folks after a fun day of sailing we have decided to treat ourselves to a new anchorage of raw natural beauty that's right we are anchoring behind this this is the cement works here in the south of Gran Canaria. It's a famous anchoring spot and it's good for two reasons. It's uh, well protected from everything except from the east because there's a long moat here. The anchorage is behind it. So everything coming from the south, from the north, from the west, all protected. Also, apparently, for some reason, 
This bay behind the cement works here is popular with hammerhead sharks. I mean, it has this industrial charm. That's for sure. And look at how calm the water is. I think that's gonna be real nice. So this is the bay. We're gonna anchor. Okay. I think it's still fine. We'll see. It doesn't smell too bad. All right. Right, folks. We tried to leave the Canary Islands for a while now, and it never works out. First, reali we realized that the weather was um, not good enough to sail, and we changed destination. And now we wanted to leave tomorrow morning, but I'm using the past tense because we dropped the dinghy engine in the water on the very last day before leaving, when everything was fully prepared. On the very last outing, coming back, wanting to store the dinghy engine. Somehow a knot slipped and the dinghy, dinghy engine just plopped into the water. We dove on it, we dove it back up, it's back on the boat. But of course it has been underwater, it's full of salt water now. And it doesn't work anymore and we do need a working dinghy engine. So we won't leave tomorrow, but we will instead take the dinghy engine to a mechanic that hopefully will be able to fix it with us. What we need to do today is we need to pickle the engine so that it doesn't rust. Because it's now full of salt water and that's bad for metal. It will rust and then it will seize and then it will stop working. So, so that's, the en that's the engine currently. We pulled it out of the sea and we plugged it into a bucket of fresh water to rinse out the salt as good as we can and what we're going to do now is we're going to take it out of the bucket we're going to get the fresh water out probably rinse it a couple of times more just to get the salt out water completely out and then or pull the spark plugs get the water out of the cylinders clean those put oil in to pickle it to bring it to the mechanic tomorrow let's go There's no water in there at all. No. <laughs> but what? Gasoline? Or Fire. Fire. And explosions. Oh. So this is the spark plug hole. Can we now just clean with fresh water? And um, I guess water displacement 40. Totally be 40. generous spray I hope that's the right thing to do okay the engine is pickled flush with fresh water and pickled with oil and or WD-40 all right the dinghy motor works again so the mechanic was able to fix it I think it was a simple fix in terms of nothing super technical happened but I'm really glad we took it to a mechanic because that guy was competent he just had a look at it did whatever he needed to do and now it's running fine again so next time maybe we have to try it ourselves but now we have seen the whole process and we actually pay more attention so there hopefully will be no next time but it's running again so I've just run brought to shore the loss of the trash filled up the water again and now we're getting ready to leave